I'm gonna take a rag nonetheless, lint-free rag or even a paper towel, and, and just inspect some of the areas and make sure that there's there's nothing on there. I don't expect there to be. Areas of concern, of course, are where um, it could pool up when it sits down in that position drying overnight. So on these side areas, I really, I really don't see any more solvent here and no more kerosene. And while it, it, it does still smell like kerosene, it's not nearly as pungent as it was before. I wanna point out something else too that I'm doing as well. And this is the uh, device where you load the paper. Again, not overly familiar with this, but what I, I do is this, I'll bring it back to the normal uh, position. So this is the normal closed position and I, I pull this forward like that to be able to turn the counterclockwise direction. You can see here, it's, it's just spinning around in a circle. And this allows me to further uh, check and inspect with a brush now that everything's dry. If there's any, any loose matter, I could just blow it right off because there's no grease. You could flip it forward and now you could get under here if you wanted to get some dust out and you could just blow it out. So I have the watch oil on the right and the clock oil on the left and the aero grease over here. I generally don't need an applicator for this because I already have a syringe. So for my first order of business, I'm gonna take the watch oil right here and I'm gonna put it on both sides of this tube, a drop just behind the chain. We could see that there on that side, there on that side. And you may find it easier to actually put the handle back on to do this. I'm slowly gonna bring this back and forth. And as I do, go back and forth, I'm going to extend it outward a little more each time until I get all the way to the end. There we go. Next I'm going to use the clock oil and I'm going to add one drop of oil to each of these bearings right here. We could see them, there are six of them, one for each key. I'm gonna apply that now. Now work it up and down to get the oil in. Now I will apply some of the aero grease over each one of those bearings. And again, I'll work it in. Now I'm gonna turn the unit around, just like that, so we have access to the cam rods. So I'm gonna use the clock oil again and, and a small brush. I'm using a foam brush. You could use any type of brush you want. And I'm gonna add some oil to this brush, the purpose of which is gonna be for these cam rods, right? I'm just oiling these. Once these are completely oiled, just like during the cleaning process, all the keys will need to be depressed so that it will lift the rods and then it'll be re-oiled again to get oil on the sides of the rods too, just like this. Turn the unit around once more. I'm gonna use a smaller brush right here to get oil on the underside of the beam, this beam right here. This is the one you can see that this rides on. Just putting just a little oil on that. I will move this over and then get the rest of it right here. These pivots here are also oiled on both sides. Use the brush for this again. And then the other side. Next I'll be doing the chain. The chain will be oiled top and bottom. Take quite a bit of oil. I'm 
Let me put a little bit of oil here on this cam. Then a light amount on the spring right here. Just a little bit. We'll rework the keys. Now we turn the machine over in this position. We'll oil the linkage pins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now I'll add oil to each trunnion. One is over here. The other one is over here. And once I do that, I'll add grease right here to that one, and then to this one. Moving the space bar up and down to evenly distribute the grease. See both sides. So in the last step, I'm gonna take some isopropyl alcohol and put it on this lint-free cloth. And I'm going to use it to clean the rubber roller as I turn it to remove any grease or debris that may have gotten on the roller during this cleaning process. Then I'll move this out of the way to complete the job. And set that to dry. Uh, this portion of the job is now completed. I'll let that dry and we will start our assembly. As a first order of business, I'm gonna put this handle back on. It slides uh, right through here, and then I'll insert the washer and screw on top. And just snug it down. There we go. I wouldn't want to attempt jamming up this machine with, by using the incorrect paper, so I'm just not gonna do that. I'll have my sister test it when she comes down to pick it up with the correct paper. The things I can check, however, are the, the keys, the function of the keys, as I mentioned, and the space, and the back space, and ultimately, if I were to uh, simulate putting in paper, I could then check the, I believe this is the advance, and that all seems to work just fine. So I'm going to be putting on this back plate. Next, I want to talk about a couple things. Uh, number one, we're going to have this in the center position. That's real easy. And number two, we're gonna uh, make sure that these move freely, right? I would imagine uh, apply oil if necessary. I didn't see a need to, these, these are just fine. And when this gets installed, I wanna point out a couple things right over here, we'll zoom in. We can see a couple things right here. You see this round piece, and on that round piece is this, this spring that's sort of sticking out, this little thin, I'll have to put my finger behind it so you can see it. It's thin metal spring right here. And this is dug out right here in the metal. And this round piece will sit on that piece of metal and the spring will go under this metal right here. So I'm gonna do that now. So it goes over that spring, so the spring is under. And then the round piece sits on there and the other side is just uh, cut out so it sits in position. And it goes just like that. Pull out my piece of tape that says back plate and remove those screws. And what I'm gonna do to set up calibration as per factory's guidance, is only insert the top right and the bottom left screw. So I'm gonna put that in now. I'm not even gonna put them in tight. I'm just gonna put them in till they seat. That's it. And so to calibrate this, I turn the unit upside down as shown and bring the carriage to the left. So what I've done is I have moved the margin all the way on the left, well, on the left in, in, in the way it's sitting now in this direction, and then this margin all the way to the left. And I pull the carriage all the way to the beginning. And now we'll watch 
and what we're checking for is that when it hits the margin on the end it does not obstruct and if it does I'm going to have to move the cover back or forth to correct it let's see that now we see that pull up top and we can see it has stopped right here and it is not getting caught or obstructing its position is good we needn't adjust it with that alignment checked I put the other two screws into the back plate and I'll test it one more time very good to put on the front plate I'm gonna have to temporarily remove this carriage lever again so I'll just do that now. Then I'll lower the front plate over. Just like that. Grab my front screws. I'll put the carriage lever back on again. When tightening this screw up here, bring the mechanism all the way to the right and go like this and check. It should come right back up. When you make it too tight, you can see it starts to bind. I'll make it a little tighter just to show. It gets stuck right so you want to loosen it so that it's just loose enough so that it does not bind now I flipped over the entire unit for the installation of the apron there's a screw on one side no screw on the other so the apron goes in like that through one screw and then seats through all of these uh, metal fingers right here and then locks into position just like that once that's in position, this screw is installed on this side. And then the other side is tightened down. For the final tightening, I have a very long screwdriver that's able to get in with much less of an angle, and I use that to tighten these screws without marring them and then I turn the unit back over there we go the the apron is installed maintenance specifies a little bit of the oil in the paper guide slot here before installing the paper guide so just put one little drip I'm just going like that with it and then I'm going to install that paper guide just press it in position get a little twist here tighten it and it goes just like that, really nothing to it. Seems awkward to install, but that's it. I'll note that a closer inspection of this for viewing, it has a clear plastic washer. That clear plastic washer will be on the, on the outside of the casting there. So you have that brass, you have the thread, the clear plastic washer, and then the, that knurled uh, metal right there. Sits so like that. With everything positioned, I'm gonna very carefully place on the top plate, paying close attention to this area right here these go through the slots up top All right so I hold that same thing on the other side and then I could just let them fall down ensuring that that washer that clear washer is still on the outside there you go everything is seated I can now put the screws in again it's important to note that the back screws uh, right here are different than the two front screws so they're not all the same I drop the front ones in first I'm not going to tighten anything down yet I'm just getting stuff in a position just take the slack out and the forward ones up front then finally the screws in the rear and now I'll begin tightening there we go covers on this piece travels good, tightens, you tighten it, you loosen it, travels. That's what we're looking for. Now I'm going to place these back on uh, these handles here. Not all of them have them, uh, this model does. Now with the unit turned over, I'll put on the, uh, the cardboard cover screw it back in.
back covers on. I had to elongate some of the holes to get the screws to fit due to warpage. Uh, it wasn't really a big deal though. Uh, you may find you have this problem too. And with that, the uh, complete maintenance as per the factory of this uh, Perkins Brailler is now finished. My sister has joined me from the south today to test out this uh, Braille typewriter. Uh, she has brought special paper in order to do this. So, just if you would. Paper. There, I have to mention to you that one of the feet are missing has to be replaced. So Feels perfect. Cool. What'd you write? Uh, so this is in grade one braille because I forgot a lot of my grade two braille. Yeah. Um, so it says, hello, my name is Jessica. Um, my braille is very rusty, but I remember a little. And I am very pleased to be a part of my brother's video. So this concludes our repair of the Perkins Brailler. This video say, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.